Well, we had another big storm come through last night. It didn't last really long, but it got so windy for about 30 minutes. It actually caused quite a bit of damage here on the homestead. We're gonna show you guys what's up. Uh, we had a tree come down that almost landed on my truck. We had another tree come down in the front yard. Some damage to the new garden, the summer garden, and uh, all the floating row covers were ripped off in our spring garden. So let's go for a walk around the homestead. We'll show you guys what's up. You can see this tree kind of broke in half. It's pretty hollow inside. It looks like it's you know pretty well rotted inside. Along the front of our property here, we have a lot of these older trees. And honestly, I know all of these need to come down. I need to just cut them for firewood. Uh, they're all in pretty rough shape. I just haven't had time to do that. I guess this one's going to be the first one. I'm just going to cut this entire tree down now because it's, it's not really worth saving at this point. Let's walk over and I'll show you the one that fell that almost landed on my truck. So you can see this uh, old cedar tree fell down, almost hit my truck. I mean, it's within a couple feet of my truck. Now this tree was dead already, but it was still standing. It looks like it's got a lot of grapevines and other things growing on it that it brought down with it. But I'm lucky that I didn't pull my truck up any further. Normally, actually, I park my truck more right up where I am now and it would have landed right on it. So I'm glad that it was back a little bit yesterday when the storm came through. So I got my work cut out for me to cut this up and we'll use uh, the cedar for something. So let's head over to the spring garden and take a look at where all of the floating row covers came off and we'll see what's going on in there. Well, you can see that all of the floating row covers are off, uh, but it, in general, it doesn't look like there's a whole lot of damage to the plants, which is good. I was worried that once the row covers were off, maybe the wind would have actually damaged the plants but it doesn't look like it did, so that's that's really, really good. Now, one positive thing that came out of this is, since the row covers were off, we were able to get a really good look at the plants, and it actually looks like there's some of our cabbage that is ready to harvest, which is really exciting. This is the third year we've tried cabbage here at our homestead and every year they just get completely destroyed by the, by the worms by, from the cabbage moth. And in most cases we weren't even able to salvage any of that at all. But this year now that we're using the row covers it really seems like that has made the difference. I don't see really any bug damage at all, maybe just a tiny bit, but I don't think it's from the cabbage worms. So. We're gonna go through and we're gonna check out each plant individually and see how many we can harvest today. The cabbage is looking beautiful. I'm sorry I sound terrible today, you guys. I have a cold and uh, I'm just trying to work through that, trying to rest as much as I can, but also we've got some work to do. So the cabbage variety that we're growing this year is an heirloom variety called Golden Acre or Golden Acre is one of the two. It's from Baker Creek and it is a fast growing cabbage, 45 days from the time that you put the plant transplant in the ground to the time that you can harvest. They're doing so great. And to choose a, a fast variety for the spring for here is perfect because it does get pretty warm. In the fall, we can probably do a variety that takes longer to come to harvest, but this has been perfect for spring. So while I'm down here, I want to talk with you guys a little bit about how to tell whether or not your cabbage is ready to harvest. These are some beautiful, nice, 
round heads of cabbage. This one here is not quite ready, but what you're looking for is a head that when you squeeze it feels hard and dense. Not squishy, uh, but pretty solid in the middle. And when the leaves on the outside of the head start to get shiny, that's another indicator that it's time to harvest. And when I harvest a cabbage, I do cut it off of the stalk, but I keep a few of these outer leaves just until I'm ready to do something with it, whether that's package it up for the refrigerator or ready to slice it up to make some sauerkraut. That will help retain some of the moisture in that head of cabbage until I'm ready to use it. So we need to start harvesting this cabbage. <laughs> Today, eight out of 30 of the cabbage heads were ready to pick. So I just need to get them ready to go into the refrigerator. Right now, I'm not ready to do anything other than for us to start eating them. So I will uh, double wrap them in plastic wrap or put them in a plastic bag in the refrigerator until we're ready to use them. Now, our family absolutely loves cabbage. We could easily eat one or two heads of cabbage a week, whether that's in a fresh cabbage salad or if I cook it. Uh, I like to just kind of um, pan fry cabbage with a little bit of onion uh, in some oil just like that it's just amazing with some salt on it so we'll see how far we can get with the fresh cabbage that we just picked today as a family and then I'll start experimenting there are a few different sauerkraut recipes in my fermenting book that I think we're going to try but I'm very happy to start with eight heads of homegrown fresh cabbage so while we were out here picking the cabbage, we noticed that there's also quite a bit of our broccoli that's ready to pick. Now, the broccoli that we're growing this spring is the Waltham uh, variety from Baker Creek. And I'll be real honest with you guys, I'm not real happy with it. The plants themselves are doing great, but the amount of actual broccoli on each plant is not great. Uh, there's only a tiny little bit on each one, but it's already starting to look like it's about to flower. So I'm certain that it's not going to get any bigger. It's just going to start flowering. I don't know if that's because our weather just got warm too quickly, or if it's just a variety issue that, you know, it just doesn't produce a lot. But we will definitely be exploring other options when we grow it again in the fall and probably going forward, I don't think we'll be using this variety. Now we can use some of the greens and uh, you know, after we cut it, uh, one nice thing about this variety is that after you cut the main head off, it's supposed to continue to produce little side shoots throughout the growing season. So we'll see if that were, you know, if that happens and how much that ends up being. But in general, it seems like we're going to get enough off of these plants for eating fresh for our family but I don't think we're going to get enough to put much in the freezer, if any at all. So, um, you know, it, it's doing good, but it's not an exceptional uh, variety for us.
Well, we ended up getting an entire basket full of broccoli, which was actually quite a bit more than I had thought that we would get. One nice thing about broccoli that you grow at home versus broccoli that you get in the store is the stuff at home, the stems are so nice and tender that you can actually eat a lot more of the stem than you can when you buy it from the store. Typically at the store, you know, you cut off the, the good part of the broccoli and you throw the stems away or throw it in the compost. But at home, it seems like the entire thing is so tender that everything tastes just as good. Uh, there's not one part of the plant that's any better than the rest. So that's a bonus is that you can eat more of it. And so even if there's smaller heads, you feel like you still get quite a bit bang for your time and effort. All right, so we're gonna get these row covers put back on before any bugs can get in and start damaging the plants. Then we'll take a walk down and look at the damage to the summer garden. Hopefully those tomatoes we planted the other day made it through the storm okay. So here we are out at the summer garden. This is where Sarah and I have just spent the last few days putting down all of the woven ground cover and putting up the fence. You can see that the wind came through and within just a matter of minutes, uh, it got so strong that it pulled up probably about half of the woven ground cover. It also knocked down the fence in a few sections. You can see that the tomatoes that we planted just the other day, uh, they have some plastic blown on them, but I peeked under just a little bit. It seems like they're okay. Luckily the wind came and really most of the plastic blew up against the fence that we have and the tomatoes are planted on the other side of the fence. So we got kind of lucky in that way that the plastic for the most part was stopped by the fence and protected the tomatoes. But we won't know for sure until we pull it all apart and start putting the plastic back down. So we're gonna spend the day today trying to put that all back. Uh, I think it was partially our own fault that this happened though. What we did is we tilled the garden and the very same day we started to put down the woven ground cover. And I think that the ground was just so fluffy from tilling that the staples really weren't gripping very well into the dirt. We've had so many storms and so much rain already this spring that we're just trying to get things done in between storms. And so we thought that it would be okay, but I think that that kind of uh, backfired on us. What we should have done is tilled and then waited a day or two. We even waited till after we had one rain. So the ground kind of compacted just enough that when we put those staples in, they really grip into the ground. Now they are predicting rain again uh, Monday night and Tuesday. And I guess some of those storms that they're predicting are gonna be pretty severe. So I'm hoping that once we get it tacked down this time, it'll stay down. Uh, but you just never know. It depends what direction the wind comes from, how strong it gets and um, you know, we've never had this problem in our other garden, so I really do think that it's because this is such a freshly tilled garden that we're having this issue. So we'll pound the stakes in extra hard this time and hopefully they'll stay in place.
Well, we've got all of the ground fabric put back down. We added some extra staples, which will hopefully help hold it into place. Now, like I said, Monday night, we're supposed to get some more really bad storms. This ground is still a little loose and now it's so wet that I still don't feel like these staples are as secure in the ground as they could be. So we're gonna take a couple extra steps to try to make sure that they stay in the ground. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take down the entire fence right away so that we can then take the tractor and drive the tires over the perimeter of the garden, hopefully packing down the soil around the perimeter where we've laid this extra row of fabric all the way around. And then we're gonna take T-posts and hopefully lay them crosswise. Hopefully the weight of those in addition will help uh, keep this, these fabric, this fabric down during the next storm. I don't think we'll need to leave the T-posts on there for long, just until, you know, we get another rain and then things dry out a little bit and then I think it'll be just fine. So uh, it's just kind of a temporary measure and hopefully it'll work. They are predicting some really severe storms moving through and I don't really want to have to redo this again. So we're going to do a little bit extra work today in hopes of saving us some work a couple days from now. Before we get back to work on the garden, we wanted to take just a minute to talk to you guys about some changes that we're going to be making to our channel. Over the past few months, we've been hearing from a lot of you that you wish our videos were longer, and we think that that's a great idea as well. But in order to do that and keep up with all of the work that we have here on the homestead and the farmer's market and actually have time to raise our family, we're going to be making some changes to the schedule of our videos. Right now, we put out five videos a week. We've done that for the last two years, almost religiously. Typically, our videos are about 10 to 12 minutes long, which means we get to spend about 50 minutes a week with you guys. We've decided to put out videos every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday, and have those videos be longer, at least 20 minutes, if not more. So the total amount of time that we'll be spending with you each week will actually be more than we're spending with you now. We're excited for these changes. You'll see these happening this week. And we're excited to be able to bring you these longer videos in hopes that we can get a little more in depth on some things and just get to spend more time with you each week. So now let's get back to work in the garden. All right, so I'm all done with that. What I did is I did two passes around the garden, one on the inside edge and one on the outside edge of these pieces of ground cover that we have going all the way around the garden. What I'm hoping that that did is first of all, push in the staples that we already have there so that they're really tight and that it packed down the dirt enough that now those are in some really solid ground. We're gonna go back around now and add more staples in these outside pieces in hopes that now that the tractor's gone over it, this ground is compact again and that those staples will really grip in tight. I think that this is gonna help quite a bit. So uh, it's definitely you know a lot more compacted than it was right after I tilled. After we put more staples in, we're gonna put the fence back up. We're gonna move it a little closer to the edge of the ground cover this time and we're going to do that for two reasons uh, one so that we have a bigger walkway inside of the garden uh, between the fence and where our rows start and also i know some of you have expressed concern that what if an animal is standing on the ground cover will it still get shocked when it touches the fence i can tell you this much i had the same concern when we first put the fence up i did do a test where i took my shoes off and i stood on the plastic and i touched the fence and it 
gave me a good shock. Maybe not quite as good as it did when I was just standing on the bare ground, but it was enough of a shock that I don't want to do it again. So I don't think that that's a concern, uh, but we are going to move it closer to the edge just in case. So that way if an animal does touch it, there's a really good chance it'll have at least one foot on the bare ground and maybe a couple feet on the plastic as well. But I really don't think that this plastic is enough, is thick enough to be a good insulator between the ground and the animal. The last thing we're going to do to try to secure the fabric during this next round of storms, we're going to just take some T-posts and we're going to just put them in, uh, you know, on top of the fabric in hopes that even if the staples start to come up again, that the T-posts will at least help hold the fabric down in place. Well, this project is done as done as we're gonna get it we'll see how it fares through these upcoming storms we'd love for you guys to be praying for us through all these storms coming up and hopefully everything will be just fine well now that we've got the garden done it's time to move on to some other chores I wanted to show you guys the latest hatch of quail that I just had hatch out just a few days ago it's time to change out their brooder pen so I'm just going to show you uh, I think I had about 19 of them hatched this time. Now I just have a temporary little a Tupperware container here for them. We'll put them in there while I'm changing the bedding in their main container and then we'll get them back in the house so they can have some fresh food and water and get them back with a heat lamp. They still uh, need a heat lamp for probably another week or so. So we're just going to clean everything out and get them back inside. You can see how tiny they are. Again, we got about 19 of them out of this hatch. I will take their old bedding over to the compost pile and we'll put in some new pine shavings and they'll be ready to go back in the house. All right, all cleaned up. Let's put the quail back in and get them back in the house. Time to get these guys back in the house. So while we were out fixing the row covers earlier, I noticed that there are a ton of peas to be picked. 
So I'm going to try to get those picked today so that we can get them in the house and have some to eat on our salads, but then also freeze some. So I'm going to go just go down the row and pick whatever's ready to be picked and we'll see how much we end up with. All right, I'm all done, and I would say that this is a great first harvest of these peas. Now, these are sugar snap peas, so these are the kind that you eat right in the pod. There were probably twice this many ready to pick, but of course, they had to eat some along the way, so don't tell Sarah. So this is what I'm taking in the house. I think this is a great first harvest. You guys, thanks so much for spending kind of a long day with us. Uh, we enjoyed putting more video together for you guys, extend the day, extend the amount of time that we spend with you today. We're looking forward to this new schedule and that we'll actually get to spend more time with you every week. I think this is gonna be a really great thing for our channel. Absolutely. You guys, if you are liking our channel, if you'd please share it with other people, we would love to have more people join us. And until next time, thank you so much for stopping by the homestead. Take care and God bless. God bless.